Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this installment of the 2014 Endurance Summit. Um, today, we've got a great guest. Um, let me just uh, quickly say this is Manny Aragon of the Rolf Workshop Center for Structural Performance. And actually, today's guest is somebody who I've uh, seen live before, um, never seen her in a race, but, um, but I'm sure we're going to hear all about that today. And she's got quite a resume. Um, it's, you know, I'll do my best here if I leave stuff out. Leslie, you got you got to add it in. But um, uh, Leslie Patterson, two-time uh, Xterra World Champion, uh, multiple other races under her belt. She's got a whole list of them on her website. There's far too many to read here. Um, and not only that, but she's coaching folks to success in triathlon and in life. And also, she's involved in films. So that's just, I mean, to me, it seems like it's just so much and, and a little bit disparate in a way. So maybe we can, um, maybe we can tease a little bit out of her um, later today how, um, how those all fit together, because I bet there's a thread in there somewhere. So, so how do you fit all this in, Leslie? I mean, it just seems like it's, it's, there's three huge things going on there. Where do you find the time to do it? Yeah, I tell you, I pretty much work 24-7, so uh, my husband can attest to that. It's, uh, it's go, go, go until I crash and burn. I take a little bit of recovery, then I do the same again. Um, so it's definitely not your uh, your average professional athlete life. Um, it's uh, a lot harder than that, I would say, in so much as, you know, the, the days are, are quite often endless, and there's a lot of uh, multitasking that goes on that, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way, to be honest, because all of those other things fuel me and uh, make me uh, a better person and, and, and ultimately a better competitor. And actually, that's a that's a great point. Um, I was going to ask you about that in terms of adversity and uh, sometimes, uh, um, um, you know, if you're kind of born and bred in the briar patch, so to speak, that, you know, life isn't quite as hard as it is for others who weren't. Maybe they were born in an uh, advantageous circumstance. But um, but tell me a little bit about that. I mean, you're you're running like nonstop. Um, it sounds like you're training, uh, and then racing and coaching. It's kind of all like training. It's just go hard and then <laughs> pretty, or pretty go much. home. Right? Yeah, truly. I mean, you know, uh, certainly when I started out, you know, I mean, I started the sport at a very young age uh, and then ended, ended up retiring from the sport for a while and kind of getting disillusioned. Uh, buy it, which we can talk about about more later. But um, I, I consequently went back to school to study drama and, and and the arts, and and you know, in order to sort of get back into professional sport and support myself, I had to get all sorts of gnarly jobs and you know, work in bike shops and train at you know three thirteen four a.m. in the morning, and you know, I've, I've kind of always had that incredible drive. Um, so, you know, it's definitely not been an easy path for me by any stretch of the imagination, but now I really appreciate those times, and I really sort of appreciate the tough times as a way to learn and grow, and that's something that I really try and foster in my athletes as well, and, you know, it, it does not come easy, and anyone that thinks it does is, is, is stupid, and really, you know, you take all of those adversities, and they fuel you, and they help you learn about yourself, and as a consequence, you know, build the build the tools that you know that that make you succeed again and again and again. Again, another great point. And this is kind of the heart of what I was hoping to to get you to share with us today. So, tell me a little bit about um, what you know. You grew up in Scotland. You know, we're Americans. I mean, we have totally different lifestyles, I suppose, in some ways. But what were some of the things that you did as a child and as a youth in Scotland before you got into triathlon, like, what do you, uh, you know, that, that perhaps prepared you better for it? Oh, definitely. You know, I mean, I grew up as a total tomboy playing, you know, soccer with the boys, and my first sport was actually in rugby, so I played uh, with, actually, it was an all-boys team, so there were no, no girls in the whole of Scotland that played rugby, and, you know, I think that that was my baptism of fire because, you know, I just... Um, I was thrown right in there, absolutely loved it, loved to get dirty, uh, loved to work hard, and, you know, it, you know, there was a lot of adversity there. I didn't have changing rooms, you know, I had to change in the bathroom because there were no girls that played rugby. I had to 
you know, cope with the sort of kind of for want of a better word, the the laughing and the joking and the pointing and oh, there's a girl playing and you know all of that. And I think it just gave me a relative thick skin and I just kind of you know I'm I'm a fighter at heart and that just really developed those skills. Um, and then you know in Scotland it's it's you know we're used to being the underdogs. We're used to sort of fighting through tough circumstances and. You know, certainly um, as as a youngster and then on into my teens when I was getting into triathlon, it, that was not something a girl my age did, you know. I mean, I used to run over the mountains with my dad when I was 12 years old and, you know, stop for a plate of soup and, and you know, run 12, 14 miles at a time. And, you know, my other girlfriends were out sort of shopping and then going out and getting drunk with their mates, you know. So it's it's, I've definitely always kind of, I don't know, taking a different path in life, and I think that that's helped me for sure be be stronger and tougher for it. For sure, and it sounds like you kind of um, crave the intensity of life, like the different. I mean, yeah. I'm just looking over and listening to you, and it's like those those things that are difficult almost are beckoning to you uh, yep. to to run towards them. So so okay, a bit of trivia. Tell me a little bit about cell running. I I saw that on your resume, and I went. I just thought, well, I have no idea what fell running is. Um, I've got to ask. What, what is fell running? Yeah, so fell running is, is a British term for running off-road, kind of out in the mountains where often there's actually no trail. Um, you're kind of out in the moors and out in the landscape and uh, uh, kind of building your own path, uh, which actually, you know, is, is metaphorical for, for the way I'm living my life. <laughs> uh, sure, but it, it really is you're out there in the wild. Um, and it, it's a, it's an amazing it's an amazing sport, you know. I think it's it's a lot like Xterra, and in, in, in so much as it's very supportive, it's all about pushing against yourself. There's a real grittiness to it, you know. People don't have the fancy equipment or the fancy shoes. You just muscle on, and you know you 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 know your your prize is a, a bottle of whiskey or a, a you know a pint of beer. You know that sort of <laughs> that's the way they roll. That sounds fun, actually. Maybe yeah. they should start doing that with the Iron Man stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. Right? I mean, I, I hear the the prize money isn't too good anyway. So. <laughs> Why not throw in some uh, throw in some some good whiskey or something? So um, so okay. And would you just? I mean, I guess it seems like um, I mean you've done really kind of a lot of intense things in the past, but. Um, how do you I suppose you touched on it a little bit, but how would you say that's really prepared you for the the um the challenges of um competing against the best athletes in the world and and overcoming them, you know, to be a world champion? Like how is that how is that do you even have any idea of that or I mean to me that just seems like such a pertinent question for you. Yeah, I think that um, I have a I have a great idea because I'm a very self-aware person um, emotionally and physically. And you know, my journey back into the arts and into acting when I retired from the the sport of travel on the first time around really allowed me to get into the heart of who I am as a person and how I function. And from that comes confidence because I realised that who I am is who I am. And and I can only manipulate and uh, develop the skills to cope with that. I, I can't change who I am. And so I think all of those uh, things that I've gone through have realized that it's my journey and I take control of my journey and where I want to go and what it is I want to do. And, 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 and not only that, sort of the passion for life that I have with the things that I do, that that's the driving factor. It's not the other stuff. And ultimately the success comes with a passion. So... It's always a constant kind of ebb and flow of that for me, you know. Like, you know, I find the passion. I, I'm loving it. I'm out there. Training's going great. I start to get the results. The results build up. Then along comes the sort of stress and the intensity and the expectation. And then, you know, I kind of try and meet that. And then I kind of take a tumble. And I, I collect myself. I find out what, you know, where I'm at and where I want to be and I sort of reset the button, so to speak, and, and then come back at it again. And, and to be honest, that's been the, 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 the up and down journey of my, of my career across the last, you know, however many years. Yeah, it seems that uh, for the kind of average uh, triathlete out there, non-professional, that, 
that the life events tend to get in the way. Like, again, you mentioned building up that, uh, you know, getting results and training and all that, and then something comes along and seems to, uh, you know, get in the way of the consistency of training. How do you, how do you avoid that? Like, what's, what tools do you use maybe with yourself and with your athletes to get around that or get beyond that? I think it's ultimately about doing the best that you can with the circumstances that you've got and seeing each hurdle as uh, an opportunity uh, rather than, you know, an obstacle. Um, And so I really try and teach that to my athletes because everybody has, you know, whether it's relationship issues or, you know, kids that are sick or something that goes on and you can either choose to use that and find a way to make it a positive thing or it's just going to get you down and and I think you know every triathlete especially it's quite funny with the new triathletes I coach you know at the end of a race it was oh and then this happened and during the week you know I twisted my ankle and I fell over and this and that and it's like you know what everyone deals with that crap and the strength in the athlete is how you you know it's the old adage right it's it's how many times can you get back up and to be honest you know the amount of crap that's gone on in my world that I just keep getting up and keep getting up and keep getting up because I'm driven by passion and that's the core of what it is I do and so I, I again I try and instill that in, in my athletes and my training partners that I'm with all the time so it's so from what you're saying it sounds to me and this is this is something that um that I think um um perhaps uh, a lot of people don't give as much credence to, but it's not that a person isn't necessarily trained when they don't get the results that they want. Because, because you know, if you're if you're out there training, you know, not at pro level, obviously, there's a whole different level of training for that type of competition. But your average triathlete, um, that it seems that mental strength can go a long way in a race. Um, you know, even if you do have some of those things come up during your training that might have taken some of your training hours and things like that. What uh, Have you found that to be the yep. case um, also with your racing as well? Or Yeah, massively, massively. And uh, actually my husband's a sports psychologist, um, and he is <clears throat> recently, he was actually in the world, pardon me, in the world of health psychology for a while, um, a professor at UCSD, a professor, professor in, at San Diego State, and he's actually taken uh, a leave of absence to help me build my coaching and really – uh, bring in, the, we call it the brain training piece to my coaching because uh, ultimately I, you know, I've always coached the person, not the athlete because that's how I'm mm. going to get the best out of them. And and so, you know, I mean, some of the stories that I've, I've shared with my athletes, I think have helped them because it's been about empathy because ultimately I go through all of the crap that, that you know, a lot of a lot of my athletes and a lot of other age groups, age groupers and non-professionals go through, um, and I think when you realise that and the level to which I've kind of, you know, uh, managed to fight against it and succeed, it, it inspires them, and and that's regardless of your ability, um, whether you're a complete beginner or whether you're, you know, going for a Kona win. It's, it's you know, it's the same principles apply. So, you know, we've actually my husband and I, as I say, teamed up and we've created all these great strategies uh, that I've used in the past uh, and and I think what's been cool for him actually as a sports psychologist is to live with a world champion and to see exactly what it is I've gone through because you know when you do go for instance and see something somebody like a sports psychologist to help you with some of those mental tricks often they just don't know enough about you to truly give you the tools and, and the techniques to help you but you know, we've kind of created a bunch of these techniques based off the fact that he's, you know, we've been married for, you know, 12 years and he's really lived the ins and outs of it. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I'd love to meet him, uh, hopefully not too long from now because he sounds like a, a, yeah. a, a interesting guy and a great resource. I mean, I, I see him in pictures on your Facebook uh, <laughs> supporting you in races and stuff like that. That's great. Oh, yeah. um, but it seems like there's so much more going on there. So. Wow, that's really cool. So, so let me um, digress a little bit and ask you um, a little bit about your films. Uh, I see that you have a production company and you've got um, some new stuff in the works. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That's that sounds pretty cool. 
Yeah, so you know, I um, studied uh, drama on my undergraduate and then again uh, theatre for my master's degree and went into acting and whatnot and um, uh, developed a, a production company with my writing producing partner Ian Stokel and uh, we write screenplays basically and we've produced a feature film and some short films and uh, we've got a sort of bigger project that's been going on for a while that we're trying to get off the ground. Uh, we optioned the rights to the famous novel All Quiet in the Western Front and we adapted that into a screenplay, uh, like a, a, you know, a new screenplay and we've since kind of teamed up with various companies along the way and had, you know, famous names on board and then off board and, you know, it's a heck of a, heck of a journey trying to get something like that off the ground but again, uh, you know, just a huge learning curve and, and one of the biggest things I'd say that my my uh, a partner Ian taught me was, you know, you have to get through your 60 no's before you find your yes. So rejoice in the no's because that means you're one step closer to getting the yeses. And I was like, wow, you know, that's such a, a cool thing. And, and ultimately that's kind of actually something that I use in training and racing as well. Um, so a lot of the things transfer over. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of currently where we're at. And then I also... Um, you know, I've been trying to get this reality TV a, a program off the ground. You know, I've been doing workout videos and all sorts. I've been trying to blame the, the, the sports with the, the film or television world as well. So I'm hopeful that one of these days I'll, I'll get something really good off the ground. Yeah, and then uh, I noticed uh, recently that you were coaching a group of athletes. Uh, there was, was it a contest or there were uh, athletes? Tell me um, about these guys. They were... Um, were they inner city youth? Like what? I can't remember. But yeah, so I put together a camp in the summer uh, called my my Braveheart Boot Camp, and uh, I selected seven sort of youth from across um, across the country actually, and uh, all my sponsors pitched in, and I managed to get them fully supported, get them all a bike, and basically for, for me it was about using the sport of triathlon uh, to take them on a journey of of self discovery and and help them you know, develop these skills that can transfer across into life. And so I've been fortunate enough, fortunate enough to have triathlon do that for me. And so I wanted to give that back to, to these kids. And, yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was a heck of a time. And uh, we've, you know, since kind of teamed them up with mentors and, and some of them have continued on with it and are still part of our world and other ones have kind of fallen off the, the face of the earth. But, uh, you know that's actually something that is really important to me. And, and uh, in fact, you know, as we develop our coaching business, we've put together a, a Braveheart elite team of athletes that are very near and dear to me. We're going to have eight athletes on this elite team that are going to get supported by all of my sponsors. Um, and as part of that, they actually have to mentor a, 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 someone into the sport of triathlon from, from a challenging background. So... There's a big kind of give back uh, element of what it is I do because uh, sometimes triathlon is as wonderful it is, as it is. It can be very self indulgent and selfish. So uh, yeah, I'm always trying to find ways to to have people give back. So yeah, that's a, a lot of things I'm doing like that. <laughs> For sure, yeah, I know. It's just like the, the list goes on and on. It's amazing, but but. You need things to spur you on, don't you? And and something like that, uh, I I think you know mentorship and um, and helping people to grow is it, it's a, maybe a step beyond coaching almost because you're taking on seems like almost a bigger responsibility than than you yep. would be with your average coaching client. Oh, definitely. And I think you know it's something that I really uh, struggle with as a professional athlete. And, and I fight with myself a lot because the training that I do and sometimes the person that I become when I am a, in the throes of training and racing is, is not necessarily someone that I like. You know, I'm always tired. I'm kind of grumpy. Uh, you know, I'm very, very driven and I kind of have blinkers on, which are a lot of things that you need to be at the top in your game, but they're also things that are inherently not me as well. So it's by giving back like this, it sort of rekindles the, 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 the goodness and the sort of person that I want to be. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you you got to have that. And it seems like you live by the, the laws of passion. So wonderful. So um, 
I've never raced an Xterra triathlon, but it looks like so much fun. Tell me um, a little bit about um, why you decided to focus on Xterra. I mean, you've raced a lot of different types of races, but why you decided to focus on that? And what if, what about the racing in that particular venue um, is um, is drawing your, your energy and your attention? Yeah, you know, Xterra is the most amazing sport. I mean, it truly is a family, and their mantra is live more. And the races are exactly like that. And, you know, I grew up, as I say, getting dirty, running out in the trails, and that's where my heart is. I love the scenery. I love being out in the terrain. It's where I'm happiest. And so when I saw this format of racing, I was like, wow, this looks totally wicked. Um, and then got into it and was, was, was pretty good pretty quick and loved the atmosphere, loved the races. And, you know, I mean, you, you know, certainly in my journey thus far in the sport, I've gotten to go to just, the most amazing places like the Philippines last year I got to go to and you know you're kind of riding in and out of these huts on the side of mountains and you know over chickens and cows and just you kind of experience this crazy world and then you know ultimately I think that that everyone is very passionate um, and I think they're driven by kind of beating themselves in the terrain rather than beating one another and um I think that, you know, in some cases, you know, certainly in, in, in triathlon and Ironman and whatnot, people have become a little bit obsessive, uh, obsessive with times and power output and this and that, which, again, there's you, you, a time and place for it, but there's something very uh, poetic and primal about the form of exterior racing. For sure. So for someone who has been doing traditional triathlons and wants to get into Xterra, what would you, are there any general recommendations you'd make? as far as yep. training? Uh... Yeah, definitely. I think that, um, you know, the scariest thing, obviously, is the uh, mountain biking. But there's a lot, a lot of uh, bike shops and um, bike companies that do stuff like demo days where they'll let you take one of their bikes and they'll have a little loop in the trails and you get to go out and test it. And it's amazing what you're able to do. And, you know, I, I always tell athletes that want to get into it, start off really slow. Start off with simple you know, start off with the flat trails without too much technical stuff and gradually build up. Make sure you surround yourself by people that don't make you feel uncomfortable, that don't push you too hard, uh, especially technically. And, you know, bit by bit, you'd be amazed at how, how far you can grow. Um, so, you know, that's definitely the biggest piece of advice. Yeah, I bet. And uh, I've, I've been... I've been uh totally salivating over getting a mountain bike again. <laughs> it's been years. I did it in college, and now I want to do it again. It looks like the bikes are totally different. I mean, everything's different about it now, but oh, it looks like so. I'm always running amongst the mountain bikers out in the hills. They're biking around. I'm running. But um, So now um, wh what would you say, like, for a person who's, um, well, maybe the average triathlete that you, you coach or, say, uh, a person getting into the sport, what would you say, like, is the biggest thing they overlook, typically, when they're training? Um, I'd say, uh, for Xterra specifically, is strength work. Um, and I mean strength work as it applies to each sport. So, yes, you have strength work in the gym, but specific strength work, whether it's climbing or big gear work on the bike, hill repeats, uh, uh, you know, running, stuff like that, um, because ultimately, for me, triathlon is efficiency and strength. You know, mm. yes, we have a speed component, but the speed component is something that comes generally very quickly uh, when you're talking about a build or a periodization. But I just don't think enough people put uh, enough emphasis on that. And especially, you know, in Xterra, you're having a, you know, you're kind of going over that red line uh, uh, cardiovascularly and muscularly continuously. And so if your body cannot cope with that from the aspect and from an efficiency aspect, uh, then then that's when you fall apart. Uh, so, yeah. And where do you see people falling apart usually um, in that race? Is it Are they falling apart already on the bike, or is it at the end of the run? Like where? Generally, it's in the run, especially in Xterra. Um, they go too hard on the bike, or their bodies can't cope with the exertion that they put out. Because uh, don't forget that the terrain often dictates you know, your intensity, uh, because sure. just to get over some of the climbs, you know, you're redlining it. So it's preparing for that and not taking on enough nutrition during the bike element, not planning it out because it's more difficult on a mountain bike, 
um, and, and as a consequence, uh, kind of dying on the run. And, and certainly a lot of athletes as well, they don't do enough running off the bike to prepare them for what that is, is going to be like mentally and physically. So, it, you know, there's kind of many things, but I've just touched on a few there. Sure. And uh, would you say that um, uh, kind of similar stuff for traditional triathlon as well? or Definitely, definitely. It's just, you know, at different intensities for different durations. Um, you know, obviously I coach, I mean, to be honest, the majority of the athletes I coach are, are 70.3 athletes and, and Ironman athletes. So, you know, we do a lot of strength and efficiency. I mean, especially when you're talking about 5-hour race, 6-hour race, 8-hour race, 12-hour race, 14-hour race. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of focusing on form, strength, and efficiency uh, to, to maintain power output. And paces across the same amount of time. Wow! Yeah, that's there's there's you know it seems simple on the surface, but there's really so much to it. Um, so 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 tell me, um, you know, so you piqued my interest. How do how do uh, how do people get involved in coaching with you, or do you have different programs that you're promoting? What 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 uh, what's new these days? Yeah, so we're really developing the coaching out, as I said. Um, we've actually started to franchise the business, which is pretty cool. So we're going to have a lot of coaches under us. And about two weeks ago, we had our first uh, coach education weekend where we had 10 coaches fly in from around the country. And we put them through uh, our curriculum and philosophy, and they're going to be coaching under our uh, banner. So we're really focused on that. So what that means is, you know, we're open to coaches approaching us if they want to be a part of this, uh, as well as there's going to be lots of different things happening in different states and different parts of the country, uh, whether it's group coaching, uh, whether it's, you know, coached exclusively by myself and my husband, whether it's coached by one of our coaches. So there's kind of many different levels, and we're, we're, uh, we're very close to, to launching our new website uh, for that because, you know, all my sponsors are involved in that as well. So, you know, not only is my own personal uh, website, you can go to that, which is lesliepatterson.com, learn a bit about it there and send me an email, but our new coaching website is braveheartcoach.com. Um, so, yeah, you can go to either one of those websites and contact us via that, um, you know, get on my Facebook business page, Leslie Patterson. So I'm I'm super, super good at getting back to people and, you know, ultimately, we, we, we really do just want to help people. So there's there's many questions that I answer all the time with no rate of return. And then, you know, who knows, five years down the line, oh, well, you, you were so good, you responded to this question. Hey, I'm interested in coaching now, you know. So what goes around comes around. For sure, for sure. Well, um, I really appreciate you taking the time to, um, to give us some of your knowledge um, and experience and share that. Okay. Uh, for sure. I mean, it's it's um, not every day that people get to, uh, you know, hear firsthand from a world champion. And, um, again, um, there's just uh, – it's not just that. I mean, you're so multifaceted. There's so many cool things that you're doing that um, that I can't see how people's interest wouldn't be peaked. But and now, did you say the um, Brave, Braveheart Coaching uh, is, um, dot com is up now, or is that uh, – It is, is that exactly. Live? It's not quite finished, but it's definitely looking pretty good. So it's braveheartcoach.com. Okay. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you can also, I wanted to plug my, my new core routine for endurance athletes, which is, is pretty darn funny. Um, it's a six-minute six-pack, so it's six minutes a day, a day of uh, core core exercises for all different levels. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, most of us, struggle to fit those kind of things in their day and that's why we made it six minutes um but my husband stars in it too so it's pretty, it really is pretty funny very well shot uh, so you can go to the website there six minute six pack dot com um and uh, check it out you can watch a, a, an about leslie video and you know how to video and then uh, if you want to purchase it it's 24.99 for instant streaming uh, for the year so um, yeah, we've been we've been getting a lot of luck with that. That's been going really well. So awesome. Well, we'll put all those links in there so people uh, know they can click on over and it'll be easy. Um, yeah. And yeah, other than that, uh, I really appreciate you being here. So thanks again. Okay. 
pleasure. Yeah. And uh, yeah. good luck tonight there for their season. Yeah, absolutely. So once again, folks, uh, Leslie Patterson, and I just want to uh, – I want to uh, – I'm sorry. Um, we have – future episodes coming up with all kinds of really interesting people, um, but Leslie has really hit the heart, I believe, of what the Endurance Summit is all about, and that is mental strength, toughness, and training. So go to her website, look her up, uh, check out uh, what she and her husband have put together. Uh, it sounds like fabulous stuff. So thanks again, Leslie, and this is Manny Aragon signing out for the 2014 Endurance Summit. All the best.